Hey guys, this is Mike Tarallo with Click, and welcome to the next video in the Do More with Click Tips and Tricks Edition series. In the last video, I covered the Master Items Library, and in this video, I'm going to show you our new filter object and filter pane. Before we continue, please be sure to visit the Click Learning Portal at learning.click.com for all your personalized and structured learning needs of what Click has to offer. Here you can select from both free and subscription-based content, instructor-led training, skills assessments, and robust video tutorials. Check out the video tour on the main page to get started. Okay, so let's get started with the new filter object. After creating a ClickSense app and having data loaded into it, when you create a new sheet, you might be brought to the simplified authoring mode. The filter object is not available in this mode. You'll have to switch over to advanced options. So in the upper right, I'm going to click the switch and now I'm in advanced options. The placeholder that was created in simplified authoring, I'm just going to right click and delete, give myself a nice brand new canvas. Now there's two ways to apply filters. First way is grabbing a field or master item, holding down your shift key and then dragging it to the canvas. The other way is going to the charts panel and then looking for filter pane and then grabbing the filter pane, dropping it on the canvas and then start adding your different field types. And you can do that through the properties panel. This is a quicker way of adding those field types if you wish. And the nice thing about the filter pane is that if you compress it or compact it, it creates a vertical list and then you could access the different filters as such. So we're not going to cover the filter pane directly because the actual features are in the filter object. And you can see the new property panel that opens up to the side when selecting one of the fields. So what I'm just going to delete the filter pane and I'm going to start over. And I'm just going to go to my master items and I'm going to go to my dimensions and I'm going to grab item model, hold my shift key and drop it. And then I'm also going to grab item type and then also year. Okay. So these are just three filter lists. Now, if I choose year, I might want to make my years go across the top, for example, in a uh, column type fashion. So I could move to presentation. I can choose show data in grid. Let's just move it over here so you can see what's happening. And we can choose rows. And then I could choose text alignment, move it to the left. I could even choose checkbox mode. And now I'm just going to swap places with one of my list boxes. And now we have the years going across the top. Maybe I don't need the title to be displayed because obviously, you know, those are years. So those are just some quick settings just to show you how you can make adjustments to the filter. Now I'll go through each one of these to kind of show you what they do. So I'm going to choose item model and we have the ability to change the dimension, change the title. You see me hide or display the actual title. If it is a master item, you can jump right in and edit the master item directly from that button. The ability to show search. So you can see there's a search icon right here. I can turn that off. Or if it is on, you have normal mode and wildcard mode. And wildcard mode puts asterisks around your keyword search. So for example, if we choose wildcard mode, go into analytics view, we type in search. And let's just say I'm interested in anything that has um, the name Coleco in it. You can see the asterisks around it. So we only have one value of Coleco in here. Um, let's try item type. Wild card. And let me just type in pad. And now you can see control pad, Robotron control pad, robot war theme control pad. So anything that has pad, basically it's similar. It just puts the asterisks around it. Um, if you go in here, for example, clear the selection and I just put it in normal mode. You can see it doesn't put the wild cards around it, but 
even if you put in, you can just type in two asterisks and then type in something. For example, I just use the letter M. It's going to find everything with the letter M in it. Okay, it's just easy user experience. Back to item model. So you have your search modes, show search as I discussed, presentation, you have your text alignment options. You have compact view, which basically removes additional white space in between the values. Uh, checkbox mode, as you've seen. Uh, you have the ability to put a histogram on, uh, which basically just kind of gives you a uh, visual representation of the frequency of the values. So for example, show frequency none, we can say show the count, and you can see the number of occurrences for those values, or you can choose it as relative frequency. So percentage, um, you know, making up 100%. And then there's the show data single column or the grid. And then if you have the grid, you can do rows. You can choose max visible columns. For example, maybe I just want all of these in two columns. And basically just make those fine tune adjustments there. And then you have your sorting. So you can choose your sorting, ascending, descending, etc. And that's basically it. It's fairly simple. It's fairly self-explanatory. It gives you a little bit more personalization, a little bit more customization and control on how you like to display uh, your filters and for them to be accessed. And just quickly, just to show you simple, let's just take a bar chart. This is just for those who might be new to click, not familiar with how the filters work. Everything is automatically linked to each other already, visualizations or filters. So let's grab some fields. Let's just do item type. And we'll do a measure for all sales. Now we have a simple bar chart. So now any of these filters that I choose, everything will automatically update based off of my selections. And the selections are maintained in this bar and you have additional options. And we also have the ability to show what we call the associative difference, uh, which is green, white, and gray in the selection boxes. Helps you discover uh, new questions you might not have thought to ask. I have a lot of videos on that that are available on YouTube in the community. Perhaps I might do a, a refresher on that as well, but I'll put a link to one of them in the description. Okay, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Put them in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Take care.